Hey everybody, and welcome to a one-off video. Uh, it's to do with um, a recent appointment of Gary Monk to uh, Leeds United. Basically, Selena's given him one year, a uh, one-year one rolling contract to get Leeds promoted. The first time of asking. Um, Selena himself says it'll sell the club if he doesn't make it this year. He's also offered 50% refund, basically, if on season tickets uh, for those who have bought them if they don't get to the playoffs at least. So I think it's playoffs 25% refund and I think if they don't get promoted it's 50%. So something along those lines anyway. Um, yeah, there's been annoying a lot of people. Steve Evans, I'll put him in here now, was not many a first choice when he became uh, the manager back in like October time 2015. Um, he did his best, he was very passionate and I think he won the vast majority of fans around, he was very emotional on his last game, It's well what was his last game which was against Preston, against another former manager in St uh, Simon Grayson. Um, it was you know, a, a tough time for him to come in, we were struggling a bit and he geared us up and yeah, some of the results weren't great but we, you couldn't fault um, the commitment from the players under his stewardship. Uh, but now we're moving on to Gary Monk and I'm using the editor, it's the first time I've used it um, and it's purely for this video only so I don't think I'm going to be using it on the non league adventure for those who are watching that um, it's purely for like, experimental videos I was encouraged by uh, Bood FM, he said oh, you know, he did the Man United one when Van Gaal and Mourinho did that comparison video what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a year with Gary Monk with a realistic sort of budget if you take into account that Leeds sold Sam Byram uh, in January and there's still something to do with the Ross McCormick money um, from Fulham when they bought him a couple of years ago. So what I've done is I've moved forward a year, um, so it's now 2016, so certain things have happened and like I've had to take some players off, so if I go to transfer history, um, these guys have come in. I've since released them automatically. I've moved Tommaso, Tommaso Bianchi to Ascoli because that's where I think he's gone. He was on loan last season. I think he's gone there permanently. He's going. Uh, Antonucci, he his contract wasn't renewed. Um, and Scott Wooten, uh, there was some sort of clause or some sort of reason why he hasn't kept on his contract. So done that. Uh, I've tried to keep it as realistic as possible. So the team that he's got is basically this. You know, Silvestri, Berardi, Belushi, he, he's rumoured to be on his way out, Cooper, Bamba, uh, Charlie Taylor, Luke Murphy, Lewis Cook, Casper Sloth, who's a bit of, is always in the background, Alex Mowat, uh, Diago Raga, Calvin Phillips, uh, Stuart Dallas, one of the best players we had this season, Pataka, he's very handy, um, Lee Irwin, Chris Wood and Dakara, Sullivan Dakara. So, it's, it seems a little bit threadbare, does that? So I'd be interested to see what it does. But I've given him a wage budget. They had 185,000. Um, I want to say a week, so I've upped it to 250, and given him 8 million, just to see if if, if he's really going to go for it. I think he's going to spend at least 8 million, which is why I've put that. And I think because it's more realistic as well with the Sam Byron transfers and what have you. So I'm hoping that he's going to be able to do something with it, but worth noting in, in the game last season they finished 21st, so they narrowly avoided relegation, otherwise I'd have to reload it all again, because I, I haven't figured out if you can move teams from division to division uh, in the in-game editor as you can see here um, where you saw them before, is quite considerably better than uh, St uh, Steve Evans unfortunately for Steve Evans, but um, after went and see, he'd actually got a job at Aston Villa and uh, basically just cancelled his contract. So what I'm going to do now is see what it does with the money. I'm going to fast forward to the end of the transfer window which is September the... I'm going to say September the 1st or 2nd but probably do the 2nd. So I'll see you in a sec. So we are back um, at the end of the transfer window. I'm just looking over this sort of a area here and it, it doesn't have any like favourite favorite ways of working. I tends to not do anything. Uh, like some people tend to sign young players or older players or you know whatever else focus on youth basically means the same thing um, the one thing that he does have is preferred formation of 4 4 one, one. passing is his playing style, defending is his coaching style balanced mentality, mixed pressing style, mixed uh, marking style and the second preferred formation is 4 3 one, two, narrow um, yeah you can see it there basically 
So yeah, we'll go into the transfer screen now, and then after that we'll have a look at his tactics and see what how he lines up if it's true to what he says there. So, as you can see, there's quite a lot happened really. There's been no outs apart from Jack McKay's going out on loan. Um, but yeah, if you exclude these here, he signed one. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 players. That's a, that's a hell of a lot. He spent 4.81 million of the 8 million that he's got as a transfer budget. And with that, he's brought in, it looks like, mainly experience. I could be wrong. He's got a 24 year old goalkeeper. Um, I couldn't, th there's still a goalkeeper that I couldn't get into the team, which is Ross Turnbull. He's actually turned into a goalkeeping coach. So, he's obviously, he's focused on getting a, a goalkeeper. And one well, that's free of charge. Uh, Ryan Alsop, Paul Huntington, a former Leeds player of course, in his younger days. Yeah, so they've got him in for 275k. Uh, Greg Halford is coming, solid 31 year old right back. Um, been around for a while now. Um, some young winger from... Well, we have a free transfer that we played for before. Um, bit of an unknown quantity. Gulliherm Ramos. A slow centre back, which looks, you know, it's another one that's young. So, a couple of young, youngish players. Chris O'Grady, a yeah, 30 year old striker, meaning that he's mixing it up a little bit. He likes his, uh, he likes a mixture of youth and experience. Jonathan Lacart, a par man's um, Olivier Descart. If anyone remembers him, he was absolutely amazing as like a defensive midfielder, especially for, for Leeds. Everton fans might remember him as well. Uh, Jonathan Lockhart, 30, mid, uh, 30 year old uh, central midfielder, looks fairly creative, well rounded. Uh, Sadio Diallo, uh, you know, these are quite good players he's bringing in to be fair, 25 year old advanced playmaker. Jamie Murphy, 27 year old winger, I, I'm going to say inside forward it says, but from Brighton. Uh, Denny Fox on loan, which is a surprise, unless, unless it's a loan to buy of course, he's a, a left back basically that can play in the left midfield. Very well rounded as you can see, not the quickest, but some good stats nonetheless. Um, Edouard Boutin, 28 year old, right winger slash complete forward, 850 grand. And then Gaetan Quartet. So he's not afraid to go into, into Europe to buy his players, um, and he likes, it looks like he's got a, a good mixture there of, um, you know, the homegrown players and like some foreign talent that we probably do need to mix in with it. It's, you've got to have the right balance, I feel. Um, unless, of course, like you've made a money like Chelsea or Man City and just throw your money here, there and everywhere. But, let's say, it looks like it's gone mainly for bargains. Most expensive of one and a half million. Uh, the one from Auxerre, uh, striker, complete forward. You know, not the quickest again, but well-rounded again. Um, so, I'll have to wait and s well, see how the fair at the coming end of the season. I've seen a couple of the results and it's not been amazing. But if I just go to the tactics, yeah. So as it suggests, he likes 4-4-1-1, and that is exactly what he's playing. Silvestri is still the number one goalkeeper, despite that other keeper coming in, Ryan Alsop. And you've got Halford, Taylor's an existing player, Cooper existing player, Belushi. That's debatable, but Halford, good option at right back. I, I do like Halford. It's just a shame he's getting on a bit. Yeah, Jamie Murphy is on the left hand side. Uh, otherwise, it's an existing. Set up, and then you've got well, say existing slot out the other players. It should do, of course. Alex Mo is injured, two or three months, and Danny Fox is injured. Um, and then Butin up top, Edouard Butin, the French uh, striker, complete forward, five foot eleven. It looks very handy, could cover a couple of positions, but uh, you know, it looks like he's got quite a few versatile players in as well. It's another thing to note. Um, so how have they been faring so far? Not very well, as you can see there. They beat MK Dons, first game of the season, which obviously wouldn't happen this season because they got relegated. Uh, won in the Capital One Cup, uh, first round, and then since then it's been all bad. So I'm hoping he's going to last the season. We'll have to wait and see. They've got a tough game next, but we're going to rejoin him now after the January transfer window. So see you in a sec. So we're back um, just after the January transfer window, and looking at it, Gary Monk's still manager. Otherwise, they're the 16th in the championship, which is roughly about the same as what Steve Evans was delivering um, around this stage. Let's have a look and see if he's made any transfers. He's not made a single one in the January transfer window, so he's obviously very happy. A couple of outs, some guy I don't recognise, 16-year-old a regen. 
Um, must have been pretty promising. A um, couple of low knees, but then most notably, uh, Solomon Dakar has gone, and so has Sol Bamba. So, oh look, Eastley have taken Alex Perver, who turns out to be quite a decent player, probably championship class. Uh, so, he's worth keeping an eye on if uh, you're managing in the lower well, like League 1, League 2, sort of early on. But yeah, as you can see, he feels like that he's clearly doing well enough. Let us, uh, let us just have a look at how they've got on generally. Um, there's a lot of red there, <laughs> has to be said. Um, let's just look at the table in full. 16th, 8 wins, 11 draws, 10 losses, a goal difference of 0. Only 5 points away from relegation, to be fair. 12 points away from promotion, and this is what it's supposed to be aiming for. Don't forget Everton, um, Sunderland, and West Ham. Ever Everton, West Ham, and Sunderland came down. I find it very hard to believe that West Ham will come down and Everton. But, uh, but yeah, that definitely happened. So it's slightly different teams, of course. Um, but generally speaking, it's the same bunch of teams. Um, I think all we do now is we go through to, through to the end of the season and see if he's one still in the job and two, if you know they can actually get get that push into the playoffs. We've got 17 games to do it. It's looking unlikely at the moment, and it, it just this is just for me as it stands, same old, same old. We seem to flirt a little bit relegation and get out of it within the last ten, within the last 10 games or so, maybe less. Will join us again at the end of the season. Right, so we are back uh, at the final stage. Uh, you know, this experiment with Gary Monk taking over at Leeds. Um, no more transfers were made, I've just had a quick check. Uh, as it turns out, they finished ninth. It was pretty strong. It looks like an end to the season. If we get onto the, um, the league table, here it is. Finished ninth, 66 points, 12 points away from. Uh, sorry, 11, uh, 9 points away from the playoffs. And. Uh, you know, a nice cushion, 21 points away from relegation. So, it's progress, if you look at it that way, because we finished 13th. It's a step in the right direction. Is it going to be the answer? We don't know. One thing I have just noticed, though, just before, this, obviously it's 4 4 one, one but you look at some of the match, at the average ratings here, I mean, Lewis Cook, who is arguably one of the best players in the team, um, it's going to be class in real life as well, I reckon. 6.58 average rating for the season. It's not very good. The best players have been defenders. Uh, it seems that it's been playing Belushi at right back, so it's been playing a centre back at right back. A bit like what everyone else has done with Scott Wooten. Um, and leaving out Gitano Barada because he's only played seven games all season. If I just go into the, the senior squad, yeah, you can see here the, the uh, apps, you know, the ones that don't really feature. I mean, Luke Murphy, 36 appearances as a sub, not one start. That's crazy paving, if you ask me. People like Berardi making seven appearances and two off the benches. And he's like, arguably, we were our, our most consistent player last season. But yeah, it's obviously it's just an experiment on football manager. And it, it's not forced to end up like this. Obviously, it's not going to bring in all the same players. But just mentioning the players, hardly any of them have actually uh, featured. But he's still the manager. Yeah, still the manager. Has his attributes uh, gone up? I think motivation, motivating has gone up by one percentage of my back being 13. I think he has increased actually, to be fair, in a couple of them in a year. Um, nothing else with the tens to or anything like that, but uh, yeah, I suppose a relative, it's not really successful in terms of what he's supposed to do. In, in real life terms, it's progression from a fan's point of view, but uh, in terms of uh, what his target is, which is uh, promotion, which is playoffs at the very least, it's failed. Um, is it going to be true to life? Hopefully not in my eyes, but I'd take it against relegation or relegation battle. But uh, this probably would seem with enough uh, success to keep him on for another year. Worth noting that in this game, uh, Selena's actually moved on the chairman. Um, so under Selena it would be a completely different story. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Um, one final note before I end the video is I apologise that I'm a little bit quiet. I'll try and boost the volume up if it if it's not good enough already. Um, people in bed to late night video, as you can tell it's darkness behind me. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully I've enjoyed this little bit of an experiment just to see how he fares in, his, in one season. Um, and hopefully he'll, he'll improve on that and end up as I just go back into the into the championship table. Well, for they were predicted to finish 18th. But uh, yeah, hopefully he'll be able to improve on that. Um, you know, 17 wins, 15 draws, 14 losses. I think from the second part, in the last 17 games that there was, that's where we were at the last point, 29 games in, 17 games to go, um, and I believe he'd lost 10, I want to say, which he's lost only far more in those last 17 games, which isn't bad, I think he'd drawn 11, and lost 10, it could have been the other way around, so, and they've won the rest, so, yeah, I don't think that's a bad return uh, on his first season uh, with us, uh, well, whether that happens in real life, I'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, like I say, you have enjoyed this experiment. If you have, want to press the like button. If you'd like to see more experiments like this, uh, let us know in the comments below and if you want me to try and do another one. Um, you know, I know everyone, every every man and his dog's going to be doing probably his Latin at Man United, but uh, you know, any others that you think uh, might be worth doing, let us know in the comments. Yeah, and don't forget, I've got uh, the non-league adventure save where I started off at Curzon Ashton, found myself at Eastleigh, and then I'm now in the Premier League. I'm halfway through. Um, this uh, the first season in the Premier League as this video goes up. Um, yeah, if you feel like it, go check it out. You might enjoy it. Um, I think you might not, but you know, you never know if you don't try. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and hopefully you join us for if we do do another one. Like I say, it depends on if people take to this one. Um, just apologies, it's not as lively as normal because it's a bit late night and gonna be quiet and stuff. But until then, I'll see you then. Bye bye.